Hi, this is another uh, Microsplat video, uh, this time uh, on the uh, wind and glitter module. Um, this is a special effects module, I guess would be the best way to put it. Um, and there's uh, two types of effects in it that can be used on any particular terrain you want uh, and um, some enhancements to the snow uh, from it. So let's talk about it. The uh, first thing you may notice is the uh, wind going on here. Uh, this is basically an effect that adds this um, sort of, um, you know, blowing sand or blowing snow sort of particulate uh, to your scene. Uh, you can control it on a per texture basis. Um, and uh, it's pretty cool. It looks really nice. Um, it's pretty easy to use. So let me go uh, over here. So the first thing we would do is we turned on the wind uh, particulate setting. Uh, and once you have the module installed, it'll show up uh, in here. And then this section here called wind particulate and uh, glitter will show up. There's a single uh, texture that all of these share. So it only uses one texture sampler, which is really important if you're going to show up on Mac. And uh, basically once you turn on that uh, feature, you will get um, uh, all the the properties for the various features of this module will show up in this uh, section. Uh, the first one we're going to talk about is this um, particulate wind effect. And so basically what you have is you have a rotation to control the direction. Uh, so I could send it uphill here. Um, you know, I can send it in any direction I want basically. And uh, this can get tied into your um, you know, wind or, or other type of module. Now the one thing to notice is that because we're doing a UV rotation here, uh, this is not the kind of thing you want to change on the fly because you'd see it uh, swim over like this. There's not really a good way to rotate UVs that are being scaled um, over time. Uh, so anyway, you would choose a, a wind direction here. And uh, then there's this color property. Um, so there's basically two uh, parts of this effect. Um, the color, if I shift the color here, you can see how, uh, you know, that gets colorized to create this effect. Um, and let's put this back in something more like this. Uh, but if I turn down the alpha all the way, you'll notice that you still see this effect. Now the color no longer has, you know, any control over this except for that alpha. Um, so there's basically two parts of this effect. The first part is what it does to the lighting function, which is to basically change the lighting uh, on, the, on the areas to create uh, this sort of um, rippling, sort of dampening effect uh, like you're seeing through uh, something and, and the light doesn't quite pass through. Uh, that effect by itself can actually create a really subtle sort of wispy snow and that's kind of what I started with. Um, but the tint uh, allows you to make this thing a little more physically tangible, right? So once I turn on the tint this becomes more like little particles of uh, sand being blown across the, the desert here. Uh, the strength is pretty obvious. It's the strength of the overall effect. Actually, let me get a little bit less of a mustardy color here and get something a little more uh, nicer. There we go. Um, we have a scale. This is the overall UV scale of the texture that it's using to do this. So if I was to set this to something like 10, uh, then it's going to tile 10 times over the course of the entire terrain. Um, I may switch these to world units before I ship this module. This is still under development. Uh, I think that might actually be better. Um, but either way, it'll be a scale uh, property like this. And so you find a scale that works for sort of the size and uh, of things that you want coming by. You have the speed of the motion. You can slow that down, speed it up, uh, whatever you want to do. And then the contrast setting controls uh, how often these wisps occur. Um, so if I turn this way up, it's going to, you know, uh, basically only let a few in. Uh, but as I bring this down, you'll see that you get more. And if I bring it down really low, you get this sort of like the whole valley is covered in this um, blowing sand effect. Um, so yeah, let's just get that somewhere nice there. And then finally you have the, the stretch, okay? And the stretch is a UV stretch to this texture. Um, if I put this... At one, you'll see that these are more like clouds now. Uh, and as I lower this down, you're going to get a more elongated texture uh, until you can get it almost like streaky like this. Um, so with those parameters, you can sort of 
shape and uh, control the density of this effect. And then uh, there's an option down here for a per texture wind uh, uh, amount. And so I could turn this off on individual textures um, and only have it show up on, say, the desert, but not up on the rocks and things like that. And it sort of leaks over a little bit on purpose uh, so that you get this nice trail off. Um, so you'll notice that on the rocks up here, I actually have it turned up, uh, turned off. And um, it doesn't really, you know, it doesn't look like it's intersecting or anything because it sort of, um, you know, gradually falls off uh, and creates this nice effect. Um, you can even see here, like it cuts right through and it's fine. Um, so, okay, so that's the first effect. The second effect is a different type of effect. Uh, it's inspired by the game Journey, which is one of my favorite games and uh, one that a lot of people have really loved. And essentially it is a glitter effect. And if I turn around to face the light here, you'll see the glitter effect and you'll see how those uh, sandstorms cover it up, uh, which is pretty nice. Um, sandstorms weren't so much a Journey thing. They did their sand uh, all through physics, which is really cool, uh, but very expensive. Um, and so this is a uh, different sort of set of effects, but uh, you can create some of the same sort of feelings with it. So if I turn this uh, these sandstorms up a lot, you'll get a lot more of that uh, dreamy, wavery look as these things cut through the shiny, uh, the shiny um, glitter here. So let's talk about the glitter controls. I'm going to actually uh, turn this contrast back up. So we still have them, but not as much. And so you'll see that it creates this sort of like uh, pointerly sort of like reflectant pattern. Uh, the idea here is to simulate what really happens on a microfaceted surface, which is that if you have millions of grains of sand, millions of grains of sand, you have uh, little mirrors essentially pointed uh, in just the right direction to create a sparkle, and that uh, often creates a grainy look because the light is being reflected in all these different directions, and so you get dark and light right next to each other um, on this microfaceted surface. So um, the parameters for the glitter here. And open these up is you, you have a UV scale for this texture now if I put this at something silly you'll see the uh, the dots here appear and um, they're masked by this uh, specular um, pattern here this is basically like a it's actually kind of a low-end specular effect the way that you uh, would compute specular in the pre PBR days uh, a big limb bird, birdian uh, specular um, and that's used as kind of a mask for the glitter effect. And uh, so there's a bunch of controls here. The shininess will control the sharpness of this mask. Uh, so you can get like, you know, a really wide one here by lowering the sharpness. And uh, now you have like a really, you know, sort of everything is, is shiny. And you'll see bits in Journey where they sort of open up this parameter and really make the whole terrain um, sparkle a lot. And then... Uh, the graininess controls sort of the contrast in these little uh, sand crystals or whatever you want to call them. Um, so I'll try and get in a little closer so you can see this. And so you can see that these become more or less pronounced as these sort of micro grains. And you can play with the scale on this a lot to sort of get a different effect um, where you get, you know, more of a grain pattern. What you really want to do here is figure out what your view distance is for this for this stuff. If you're walking along and this is the ground, you might want a really high scale. But if you're, you know, going to be seeing stuff from further back, you may have to lower that uh, scale so that these things are generally a pixel or two in size um, in your scene. So view dependency uh, controls how much of the view vector, the direction of the camera, is taken into account on this mapping. And what this is, is that when you turn this all the way up, you'll see these things sort of swimming around uh, on here. And that's because as you move your head around, uh, the places that sparkle and things like that would be uh, changing from the changing angle and position of your head. And so just by bringing in some of the view vector, um, it sort of helps, uh, you know, simulate that effect. Um, so let me turn this down again. I like it kind of right in here. Um, my rabbit is chewing stuff. Stop it. There you go. <laughs> um, oh great, now she's going to chew that. So uh, the strength should be pretty obvious. It's the strength of this overall effect. 
so you can um, turn this uh, up or down. Um, there's also a per texture parameter uh, down here for each of these, so you can basically uh, adjust this per texture as well. All right. Um, so the threshold, uh, the threshold is kind of interesting to explain. Let me really crank the strength of this thing. So if we really turn this up, and you really get a lot of this pattern going, if you turn the threshold down, it feels like it's part of this uh, um, specular, this overall strength, but it actually is kind of like an overdrive on it. And so when you turn it way up, you'll see that everything gets a lot more crunchy. Uh, and as you get higher strengths, really crank this one, you can see that it, it actually blows out uh, into this sort of gold shimmering pattern here where you get the sort of dark in the middle, almost like a wetness effect. Uh, and they use this a bunch in Journey. They sort of overblow, uh, blown uh, sort of settings like this to create some of those really dramatic scenes. Um, so that's what the threshold can do. Let's bring this back down. It's unreasonable. Um, and let me bring my contrast down a little bit. Get a little more of these guys. So uh, this is obviously a pretty cool little effect pack. Um, there is another set of these effects as well. So let's look at them. Uh, if you own the snow module, um, you can turn this on. Uh, there are some new features in the snow module if, uh, if you haven't been following along. You can now actually use it to put snow on a, a lot of sort of standard uh, objects. It won't work for uh, trees and things like that, but for anything that works with mesh blending, uh, you can now actually turn on uh, snow as well and dial that in. Uh, so slowly I'm sort of moving the snow kit to be more general than just um, you know just snow on your landscape. Uh, but when you turn on the snow module and you have this module as well uh, you can actually turn these two effects on uh, for snow uh, particulate wind and then for the glitter as well. Um, and you get sort of separate systems here uh, to work on. So they can actually have uh, different contrasts and parameters and things uh, so that you can create the effect um, more or less. And um, the other cool thing about this is that uh, this is a not only its own system but it's masked from the other one. So um, for instance I can really crank the contrast on the um, snow particulate setting here all the way down. Um, and I can even change the speed of it to be faster to create this really like it's freezing and the wind's blowing really hard kind of feeling. And then if I go down, go down on the hill, we'll turn this one up. So now when we go down here, we don't see that anymore. We just see, you know, just, just a little bit in here from this other system. Um, so they can have completely independent settings and, uh, and colors and things like that too. So go back over here to the snow. Uh, you can see I've got like a little bit of a blue hue here. Uh, maybe I really want to drive that, make it feel like, I don't know, it's freezing or something. Um, and uh, and yeah, and it won't affect the other areas. So uh, that's pretty cool. Um, it means that you can sort of drive two of these effects uh, at once on your terrain. It's a little more blue than I intended. Um, and uh, they're both pretty cheap when we talk about uh, performance. So um, they use one texture sample. Uh, basically, the way this texture is laid out, if you know my shaders, you know I like to pack textures. So there's a single texture here, and it has, um, I have it in Photoshop here. Let's bring the Photoshop. There we go. Um, and what it has in it is this is a noise texture for the wind. And you can put whatever you want in here. It's just a noise texture, and it will sort of create those wisps from the noise. And then in the blue channel, we have another noise texture. This is used to modify the sparkles so that you don't really see tiling as much and things like that. Uh, it's just sort of a general noise. And then the actual sparkle texture is a normal map that looks like it has a bunch of glitter on it. Okay, And so these are basically a bunch of encoded directions uh, sort of speckled around the normal map. Um, and this texture doesn't have to be extremely high res. Uh, it just, 
how you, the, the thing you really want to do is keep it uncompressed. Um, it can even be, you know, 256 uncompressed and you can still get all of this, which makes it really fast to sample. So we only use one uh, texture for all of these effects, which is great. And then if you look at the effects, um, basically the, uh, the wind uh, functions take two texture samples and the glitters uh, take two texture samples. So um, right now, because we have two systems going, we have eight texture samples for all of this, uh, which is still pretty cheap considering that um, you know there are other train shaders out there doing hundreds of samples per pixel and they're not getting nearly as much as this. Um, so yeah, that's basically the module. Uh, right now it's taking about almost a month to get things through the Unity Asset Store, so it'll take a little while to get to the store. Uh, I hope to finish this off and um, send it into the Asset Store as soon as the Asset Store approves the cluster modules, which was the last one I submitted. Um, so yeah, hope you like it. hope it's useful. If you're making a game that can really take advantage of this effect, I'd love to hear about how you can use it, what you might use it for. Um, I think it's really cool. I kind of like doing these modules of, you know, nice little custom effects that are really cool looking that you can use on one game. They're really fun to write. Um, they also, uh, yeah, they're really fun to make. And, um, and this is the kind of stuff that I can do with Microsplat that's hard to do in most other shaders because I have my own compiler and things like that that allow me to sort of take this way further than most um most sort of, you know, train shading systems could go. And uh, I think there's actually some advantages to doing some of these things directly in here. If you did this any other way, you'd probably be dealing with a lot of particle overdraw, uh, things like this. This is actually super cheap. And, um, you know, the fact that it's all part of the train is kind of amazing. Like it doesn't really, um, you know, look like it's part of the train. It looks like it's floating above it. And, uh, but it's not, it's just part of the train. So, um, yeah, uh, I think that's about it, and uh, I hope to have this out as soon as the asset store approves it. Thanks a lot.